Blessings and shalom, brothers and sisters. So there was an event in Washington at the Washington Monument, I think. Uh, there was a gathering or a group of people who called themselves the Freedom March, or just Freedom March, who are quote-unquote ex-gay people who have come out of gay and lesbianism, and now they're believers in Christ. And every year they get together. But one of the founders said, and I quote, what I love about this is that there are Baptists, Pentecostal, Catholics, all types of people coming together in the name of Jesus, saying that change is not only possible, but it's real through Jesus. And I get excited when I see an Adventist brother, a Church of God brother. It brings me so much joy to how the Lord is unifying the body of Christ, end quote. The other co-founder of this gathering said, and I quote, we call each other, do Bible studies together, encourage each other. It has built a family, and it's a young family, end quote. Now, personally, I don't buy the legitimacy of this, because let's look at the group of people who came together. And I added a little bit more, but look at group A from this PowerPoint. If you have an event, and all these people get together, that represents group A here. What do these people have in common when they all share different doctrinal beliefs from the Bible? Some don't even repent the same as others. It's all different for each person due to each different doctrinal background they all each come from. Would you call that unity? Or is unity being defined by the quantity of the number of people being there? Let's do a hypothetical. What if these people gathered together at an event? An occultist, atheist, people who identify as a vampire, what if they got together at an event that represents group B here? Same question, what does group B have in common? And do they have unity? The first answer is what they all have in common is unbelief. The second answer is yes, they have unity because of that same common denominator among them call unbelief. Now, I don't have to get into a debate, do I, with someone believing Jimmy, who identifies as a vampire, believes in Jesus, do I? And let's just say he does profess to believe in Christ, uh, but he is no different than those who profess to fornicate, defiling their temple, showing they really don't believe because Jesus says, if you follow, if you, if you follow me, uh, if you love me, follow me. So if you believe in Jesus, you love him, you're going to follow him. It kind of goes in that order. So you can't believe that Jesus gave you a wolf, cat, vampire DNA to where you meow, bark, or howl at the moon from time to time. That is not the characteristics of a true, real believer. I just wanted to point that out. Now, if you put group A and group B together and ask who would win in a spiritual war, battle, fight, it's obvious. Group B would wipe the floor with group A because there is more unity in the common denominator of unbelief among the people in group B. Group A would actually aid in their downfall because some over there have unbelief. They believe in a man, but they don't believe to follow in obedience within group A. But the common denominator of unbelief among the people in group B, by the very void of Christ, means they all serve Satan more or less and could really conjure up many evil wickedness against group A who could be powerless. Because within group A, there are some more or less who serve Satan also. The people in group A live by man-made doctrine than the gospel. Some even have their own Bible that's read different, taught different than the others. Some of them even praise the Lord differently than others. There's just so many differences that within, within group A that they have. Some have more of the spirit of rules and regulations called religion than the actual relationship in Christ. Some in group A don't even believe in obedience and holiness, making them not even spiritually protected against principalities. Some don't even repent, while others repent to a man dressed in black with a white collar around his neck. So there's just so many differences in faith, belief, and obedience that you see within group A. And please share if you like in the comment section of others you know about. But there's there's more disarray in beliefs within group A than unity. 
So they could not be able to stand up against group E. So let's do another hypothetical. If you have an event of people like this in group C here, gathered together who are not a part of any denomination, who read their Bible from no other teaching than the Holy Spirit teaching them, they live to follow the Spirit of God and His commandment, daily striving to follow what the Bible says, follow the commandments. What do these people have in common? What makes them different than group A and group B? Well, let's take a look at that. Group A, you have some who believe in Jesus but don't strive in obedience and some who don't repent. Group B does neither believe in Jesus or follow or obey or repent to him. While group C is following the law of Christ, they read the Bible, they don't belong to any church, run by a man who could tell them they don't have to be holy or repent. Jesus washed their sins in the blood. Therefore, group C lives to repent. They live to strive to follow what Jesus says. They live to strive in holiness because their Bible that they read tells them so. But how does group A and C differ from group B? Because of both, they have belief in Jesus. Group A and group C, they believe in Jesus. But how does group A and C differ from each other? Well, group C follows the word of Christ without no interference of man telling them differently. While group A follows man or religion, which always has a false doctrine attached to it, saying they don't have to really comply to everything in the Bible because Jesus paid it all. Or they could be in, within group A at the last, uh, the last little bit there of the Catholic where they have their own little Bible and go from that. But what group could withstand in a spiritual fight between group A and group C, you think? What group is more unified between group A and group C? Out of every group, which group would spiritually best in, in war than the other two groups? And once you know that answer, that is the group of the true body of Christ unified. Because unity in Christ is not the most numbers of believers all together in one place. It's the unity of those who actually follow Yeshua who are the true believers, which makes them the body that is united together. Catholics and Baptists, for example, believe in Jesus, but they have no unity together. They practice two different things. One does not obey, the other repents to a man. The common denominator is faith, but it has to be faith that follows what Jesus said, which is the call to obey him. If you are of a group that don't believe nor obey, you are not a believer. You are of a false religion or a false doctrine because Jesus tells us if we love him, keep his commandments, which means we are going to obey his commandments. There are denominations that don't teach you that. So they believe in Jesus, but they don't follow Jesus. So who is more united and will stand spiritually in war? Who is more unified? And what group are you in? Blessings and shalom.